Okay, now it's the third example. It's a bit more complicated than the previous two. It says prove the following argument where the first premise is not Q implies R implies P. The second premise is not P. The third premise is Q. And then therefore the conclusion is R. All right. So assuming that these three premises are true, I need to show that the conclusion, which is R, must be true. All right. So um, be careful. This not sign is in front of this bracket. And this bracket is a conditional sentence. It's not an atomic sentence. It's a So therefore, the, the negation of the conditional sentence implies an atomic sentence. So therefore, this is a relatively more complicated uh, conditional sentence. All right. So how can I start? Well, um, again, these are the three rules which are enough to prove this argument. Um, so here, you have to take some time and, and look at it carefully and, and try to see which inference rule I can use. All right. I already did the thinking part. So what I do see here is, is this conditional sentence and then the uh, not P. And so it looks very much like the modus tollens. All right. So I have something implies P and then not P. All right. Like P is equal to Q in this uh, environment. So therefore I must have not not Q implies R. So the fourth conclusion by using the modus tollens is not, not, Q implies R. And again, this is thanks to modus tollens of argument uh, one and two. Okay, now the fifth step is easier because this is double negation of some uh, sentence. Uh, so not not Q implies R must be equal to Q implies R. This is simply double negation of the argument in line four. So what do I have? Um, okay, I have premise number three. I have a new conclusion, which I know it is true. Q implies R. So I have a modus ponens here. So six. Thanks to three and five and modus ponens, I have R modus ponens of the arguments three and six. All right. And that's it. That's the conclusion that I was after. So this is the direct proof of this argument. So this argument is valid.